This video may disturb or even piss some people off, so viewer discretion is advised. Suicide attacks are very common in certain parts of the world and have been common in other parts of the world in the past. Most Westerners, including for a long, Westerners, including for a long time me, have looked on such tactics with shock. The idea of telling somebody to launch an attack where their death comes as part of the job description is simply too freaky for a lot of people to think, think about, let alone study. They are... They can be very destructive. They often kill a lot of people and destroy some pretty expensive stuff. The only catch is finding people who are willing to kill themselves to accomplish a goal. It takes balls the size of the sun to carry out such an attack. It takes serious dedication and bravery to begin a task which you know you will, you will not survive, much less benefit from, much less receive any personal benefit from. Regardless of how you feel about the cause for which the suicide attack is being launched, it is easy for a suicide bomber to face the fact that they will be dead within, within hours, minutes, or even seconds. And even if you believe you will get to fuck 72 whores forever, martyrdom is only for those who have a few metric tons of courage, and the cowardly or weak at heart need not apply. <clears throat> the recipe for, a su for suicide attackers is normally a combo of some or most of the following factors. People who have balls the size of the solar system who do not mind dying for a cause. A superior military force which cannot be overcome by conventional means. S extreme brutality and oppression in practice or the simple fear, fear of it in the future by the said superior military force. A society or culture that accepts or even glorifies suicide and or suicide attacks. A difference in a religion, religion between the opposing forces. Last but not least... A conflict that goes three or more ways. There are factors that there are more factors than I listed, and you can research them if you want. Such tactics are normally only employed, as said, stated above. Such tactics are normally employed only when faced with a superior enemy. And trying to make sense of it, we can take into account the, the words of renounced fighter ace Saburo Sakai. Japanese fighter. He was a Japanese fighter ace, by the way. In a 1998 interview, he, he said that a lot of Westerners were shocked at the idea of putting a kid into an aircraft and telling him to go to crash himself into an enemy ship and killing himself by default. He then went on to explain that even if you don't tell him to crash into something, most of them had only about 20 hours of flying time and wouldn't last very long against U.S. aviators who flew superior aircraft such as Hellcats, Corsairs, and Mustangs. With that in mind, the Japanese decided that if they were going to die anyway, they might as well take the route, the route that would do way more damage for the same price in men and equipment. The information provided us by, by, to us by Mr. Sakai really helps us understand the thinking behind suicide attacks as well as the mindset of those who sacrifice themselves. Throughout history, societies have used this glorification of death in combat to make its warriors less afraid of death which is something the overwhelming majority of humans, regardless of culture or social standing, fear on the basis of pure and most, ba of pure and most basic instinct. This manifests itself in various ways through history. In ancient Sparta, only two types of people were allowed to have graves, net their names on their gravestones. Women who died in childbirth and men who died in battle. Vikings believed that, any, believed that those who died in combat went to Valhalla. The Japanese put their names of their KIAs in the Yaskuni Shrine ever since the Meiji, Meiji res Restoration, where even the Emperor came to bow to them. Keep in mind, the Emperor was a god to them, at least until 1945. <clears throat> the U.S. and many Western nations give medals, such as the Purple Heart, for being wounded or killed in combat, and we all know about the 72 virgins Muslim martyrs get when they, when they blow themselves up, or are killed by enemy fire. Suicide attacks will often occur in the face where an will occur when the other one side faces an enemy that is way more powerful. Example: For example, a jihadist attacking a tank column or a platoon of of Navy SEALs or British SAS is just as suicidal as pushing the button on a suicide vest. In such situations, where with poorly trained and equipped troops, it is often easier to do more damage for the same price in lives, as Mr. Sakai said. Sakai said. For example, 
The most famous suicide attack in history is 9-11. Twenty men from Al-Qaeda came in, came, came in to, to hijack four, air, four aircraft, which they would ram into various buildings. They killed almost 3,000 people and, an, and another 6,000 injured. Not to mention the cost of the US to the U.S. economy was tens of billions of dollars for a cost of only 19 oper operatives killed and one captured. Not to mention it was relatively cheap for them to put this together. Just a few airplane tickets and the price of a, you know, a few box cutters. And well, a few flying real lessons as well. But the cost of two operate operatives, Hezbollah blew up a barracks in Lebanon and killed 240 U.S. servicemen plus another 58 French ones. In World War II, a single kamikaze damaged the U.S. enterprise to the point it could no longer land or launch aircraft, thus taking it out of the war. Bunker Hill got hit with two kamikazes, and the result was the same. Thus, the Japanese took out U two U.S. fleet carriers for the cost of three planes, aircraft, and their pilots. Not a bad trade-off at all. Granted, not all suicide attacks are successful. Most kamikaze pilots hit nothing but the Pacific Ocean, and some suicide bombers kill only themselves. But they generally offer fairly good returns. Since the year um, 1982, the average kill ratio for suicide attacks is 10 to 1. <clears throat> this, and it also has a very big psychological effect, especially on Westerners, because we're not used to the idea of killing ourselves, and as, at least not on a massive scale. I know we, we have a suicide rate in this country, but it's nothing compared to suicide rates you generally find in the East, like, say, in Japan, South Korea, or, or, some Eastern, or a lot of these Eastern European countries. These Asian, you know, Asian and Eastern European countries, they generally have suicide rates that are much higher than the United States, Canada, or Europe. And finally, it is important we look at the, the type of individuals who do who do these ki who do these kinds of things. We can even look at people such as Dylan Roof, Nidal Hassan, or the duo in San Bernardino. Well, they, while these three, well, well, these four, um, are not technically sui suicide attackers, the perpetrators put themselves in a position where capture or death is almost unavoidable. <laughs> Understanding the psychological profile of these people is not easy, primarily due to the fact that they are dead, that they are dead. And, um, how we can, however, look at some of the messages that they leave behind, as well as the societies they lived in. It is much more, it, this will be a much more complex topic than you think. Nations, nations such as Japan have a high tolerance or even glorification of suicide, have historically used suicide attacks and, 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 and the indoctrination to enforce this, to reinforce this. However, you don't need a culture that, that accepts suicide to find willing bombers. Islam, contrary to popular belief, does not have a positive view of suicide unless it is done in the name of Allah. Naturally, this helps recruit people who might otherwise not want to kill anyone but themselves. If you want to die, who, who or what can scare you? The answer, if, if you are Muslim, is Allah, and burning in hell forever and ever and ever. This, is probably this probably provides a loophole for some of them who, do, who want to die but not burn in hell. This gives them a way to kill themselves, and they will not go to hell. In fact, they will be rewarded with 72 virgins. Often, the, the institution... Is the net often the institution, be it national government, terrorist group, or militia, or whatever, will create conditions where peer and social pressure to die gloriously in battle can become overwhelming. Again, humans are born with a fear of death, but humans are social creatures, and thus, if a society wholly praises people who kill themselves and take a few or sometimes more than a few of the enemy with them, it often provides people a chance to achieve a higher social amount of social status and very high social status, even if it is posthumous. It is worth noting that a lot of the people who do these suicide attacks are often middle class and well educated. A lot of kamikaze pilots were university students, and most of the 19 hijackers on 9-11 had at least some college, some college education. And finally, 
These are people who are committed and dedicated to their cause. After all, they are willing to die for it. They are so full of hate and hate that this emotion overrides their natural instinct for survival. The amount of time, social pressure, and cultural indoctrination that it takes to make someone a suicide bomber varies from person to person. There is no cookie cutter standard. Again, we will never understand the mindset of everyone who straps on a suicide vest. Because after that, they push the button. They push that button, they're, well, dead. They're dead once they push that detonation button. They're dead and they generally take a few people with them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I didn't. It, I've pro, I know I've probably offended some people, but I know it. But I've just told the truth, at least the way I see it. Nothing more. And, uh, anyway, like, comment, share, subscribe. And, uh, if you can, leave a donation. It's for a real good cause. Peace. Mm -hmm.